Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about the Open Indiana operating system. So this is a Unix-based OS uh, derived from uh, Solaris. So it's not Linux. So if you're looking to maybe get into some Unix, uh, maybe programming, app development, or just training purposes for an upcoming job, you might want to give this a shot since you could run it on your computer. And of course you could run this on a virtual machine as well. Alright, so all you need to do is download the ISO file, uh, make a bootable flash drive for it, and then boot your computer to it. And then you'll see here we have the boot multi-user option and the boot single user. So if you do the single user, uh, you won't get the graphical interface. So if you do the multi-user, then you will get the graphical interface. So we're going to try that one out here by pressing 1. So what this will do is it will load the operating system into memory so you can try it out first and then if you like it you could actually install it. Alright so we need to pick our language here so 7 is the default for English so we'll just press enter. Okay, so we are technically running it in memory right now. It's not installed on the hard drive, and we have the option to install it, or we could install it using the text-based method if you don't want to use the GUI method. So one thing I will say, if you use the live version here, uh, there'll be a lot of things you can't do because it's going to want an admin or root password, which you don't have because it was never configured, so it's just not going to work. And if you let the uh, screen time out, it's going to ask for the password as well, which you're not going to have. So that's why we're going to install it and then we'll play with it that way. All right, so as you can see, you know, you can still check out the applications and locations and system options. And you have your uh, bar up here, typical volume, network connection, clock. You have your workspaces here, your trash. Then you have a way here to hide some windows. So you can technically play around with it. You just can't really do anything like install software or add files because once you shut it down and reboot it, they're all going to be gone and revert it back to the way you see it now. All right, so we're going to just double click on the install open Indiana icon here. So you can see it's not going to upgrade existing installations. And if you want to do that, you'd have to check out the documentation on how to do that. So we'll click on next. All right, so now here's where you need to be careful. So if you are testing this out like a dual boot system with Windows and you partitioned your C drive, you need to make sure you're going to use the right partition. Or if you have a secondary disk, uh, you could just go ahead and do that. And then you have the option here to partition the disk if you want to make your own partitions or not use the whole thing. Otherwise, you could just use this option to use the whole disk. And it tells you the entire disk is going to be erased. So we'll click on Next. All right, then you can pick your time zone here. So this is a little weird because it's you got to kind of zoom in here and click on the right place on the map. Unless you scroll down here. And then you can pick it from here. All right, so we need our locale, so it picks United States, so that's good. All right now we're going to make a root password here. All right, then we'll make a user account for ourselves here. We'll just go with Bob. Do the same for the login name. Make a password for Bob here. All right, then we can have a computer name, so it'll give you the default here. We'll just go with that. That's fine. All right, so here's our summary. It's going to use the whole disk. It says it's going to take 7.5 gigs. We have our time zone, our locale, our user accounts. So I'm just going to click on Install. All right, so this will take several minutes here, so I'll we'll pause the video and then be back when it's done. All right, so the installation is complete. So one thing I forgot to do was to either keep moving the mouse or change the screensaver timeout because during the installation uh, the screensaver kicked on that it wanted the admin password to get back in and then like I said there is no admin password until you're done installing it so I actually had to start it all over again so keep that in mind when you're doing it yourself alright so installation is complete so we're going to click on reboot and see what happens
All right, we'll pick option one here. All right, so I paused the video so you didn't have to watch all of those the service descriptions go by there. Let's put our username here and our password. All right, so now we have our desktop without the option to install since it's already installed. If you go to our file system here and see all of our files on the local hard drive. You can see we have documents and downloads, kind of like Windows does. It seems to be a theme with a lot of other operating systems here. Network options, if you're connected to the network with other computers. So you can see it's not very uh, advanced looking. It's pretty basic looking, like, you know, it's just kind of simple compared to some of the flashy Linux installations you could do. All right, so let's check out some options here. If we right click, we could create a folder. Create a launcher, make a new empty file, open the terminal. Organize the desktop, do things with our icons, change the background. Maybe we just wanted something simple like that. Just like so. All right, then you have these panels on the top and bottom, kind of like taskbars and windows. And if you right click them, you could add stuff to the panels, check the properties of the panel, change where it's located, have it set to auto hide, I change the background for the panel, delete it, reset it, make a new one, and then the same options here. All right, let's check out the applications here. So we have accessories. Character map, search, calculator, it's like text editor, screenshot, we have our web browser, our terminal, a couple of graphics options here, internet, we have Firefox, Pigeon, Thunderbird for our mail, we even have a VNC viewer, document viewer for office, programming apps, sound and video, and then a bunch of system tools. And then we have a run option here if you want to run something manually. All right, then places. So this is just locations on your computer here. Network, connect to a server, local computer, desktop, home folder, recent documents that we don't have. Then we have some preferences for our hardware. Proxy, some look and feel, some other options here for preferences. Personal preferences. So if you want to set your preferred applications, for example, kind of like your default apps in Windows. Check your startup applications. Disable anything you don't need to run. All right, then we have administration. Not a lot here. Network, uh, let's see what we have here. Right, you can see this is where it's going to ask you for the root password, which you set up during the installation. All right, so now we have to reset it because it says it expired right away here. So you might run into that. Okay, re-enter the new password. All right, so now we're on our network settings here. So we're wired, we're connected. Here's our IP address, IPv6 address, our speed. View your network profile, set to automatic. You could add a new one. And edit as needed. All right, here's where you could change from DHCP to a manual IP address if you need to, and configure IPv6.
Right, then we have a print manager, time slider, control center here, which has a bunch of options, kind of like control panel and windows. If you click here, it just kind of goes down the list, which you do the same thing just by scrolling down it here. So some of the same options here, display options, keyboard settings, and shortcuts, power management. I'm going to set that to never if you don't want your uh, display going to sleep. Proxy, then we have appearance options here. You want to change to like a dark theme. Pop-up notifications, manage your windows, manage your screensaver, personal information, file management. You want to change how that works here. You know, such as adding single click to open an item instead of double click, kind of like Windows does. Change your previews, media options, and extensions. All right, then we have some miscellaneous stuff down here, such as for NVIDIA stuff for graphics, uh, audio preferences, and input select. All right, then we have help and about. You can lock the screen, log out, and shut down. Then you can come here and click on your calendar. Set your location, that type of thing. All right, so as you can see, there is not a whole lot to it, but I think that's kind of the idea, uh, just your basic Unix-type operating system. So if you want to play around with Unix, you know, get some commands down or try some programming and that type of thing, this might be the uh, OS for you. And like I said, too, you can run it as a virtual machine if you want to play with it before installing it on your main computer, or maybe just use it as a virtual machine so you don't have to make this your main operating system since it can be a little limited uh, for other types of things. All right, so I'll put a link in the description where you can download Open Indiana and you can try it out for yourself. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.